So my name is Johan Thuesen. I'm a lecturer at the Institute of Health Informatics uh, at UCL. Um, and I'll talk about uh, my research uh, done uh, looking at electronic health records at Camden and Islington NHS Foundation Trust, where we looked at polypharmacy and um, uh, dosage of antipsychotic medication and its effect on adverse drug reactions. So at uh, the trust, we have an established uh, research database using uh, the CRIS system, which is a tool which was first developed by South London and Maudsley, which basically anon anonymizes uh, patient data from the electronic patient records and feeds it into a centralized database. So this enables us to have a secure research environment uh, where we can analyze the health data from the hospital. Uh, and it also allows us to, to use the anonymized free text information uh, to extract information using uh, natural language processing applications. So here's just a little overview of what's available in the database at the moment. So it includes data from the two uh, EHR systems used at the Trust, Rio and Kernotes, uh, going back uh, from 2008 up until June this year has about 149,000 uh, individuals, and it covers a wealth of different information, demographics, diagnostic information, episode types, and importantly for this project, a lot of free text information from document attachments and progress notes. So natu natural language processing is basically computer algorithms to help understand uh, that can read human language and uh, mine uh, concepts that we want to extract. And in collaboration with the SLAM, we've uh, applied a range of different uh, NLP applications on the text data to extract diagnostic information, information about cognition, uh, smoking status, and, and medication. And just to give you a little idea of, of what that sort of data looks like, basically within the, the, the free text, there's a mention of a prescription. And the NLP apps extract this data for us and gives it to us in a structured manner. So that we have it um, uh, linked with a patient ID, a date, and we can even establish the route of administration and whether or not the prescription is, is ongoing. What we did was then take all of this data and then first of all, uh, group all the generic drug names um, that were present in the free text into sort of these 25 uh, main antipsychotic uh, medications which were prescribed at the, tr at the trust. Um, and we also restructured the data. So we have sort of more of a prescription type data type here where this is an example uh, of uh, information from one ID sorted by date. And you can see using uh, this sort of structure, it's very easy to establish periods of uh, polypharmacy. So we're basically just interested in antipsychotic uh, polypharmacy for this uh, project. Um, you can have antipsychotic polypharmacy over a short period of time, but we don't really expect patients to be uh, on uh, two antipsychotic medications over a longer period of time. And by establishing this, we can sort of create this heat map to see which different drugs were co-prescribed um, most and, and also um, yeah, basically find which drugs we want haven't been uh, co-prescribed together. So we did a bit of um, analysis of how well the NLP application had done by manually annotating uh, 50 nodes. And we could see that uh, the NLP app did capture uh, dosage 100% of the time correct. Um, route of administration was also mostly um, captured correct. Uh, in terms of sensitivity, we captured uh, the dosage around 92% of the time. An example of, of a sentence where it wasn't captured was something like this, olanzapine was reduced last week to 15 milligrams. Here I think maybe the dosage is too far away from the, from the drug, but we're currently uh, improving uh, the NLPs that we can run on the data here. So we hope to get this precision uh, and this sensitivity up somewhat. What we then did was we basically calculated uh, the dosage as a, percentiment, as a percent of the maximum um, recommended by using uh, prescribing guidelines from BNF and Motsley. And um, doing that, we can stratify our sample into patients who've only received monotherapy, patients who at some point have received uh, polypharmacy of antipsychotic medication, here defined as a period of um, 30 days or longer, and patients who 
only receive low dosage, which is 75% of the maximum um, recommended, or patients who've received high dosage, uh, dosage of 100% or more. And if you can, as you can see here, uh, if you're male and you're sort of like in midlife uh, age groups here, um, you're more likely to receive high dosage of uh, antipsychotic medication and polypharmacy. And black and black British uh, patients were more likely to receive both polypharmacy and high doses as compared to the other ethnicities. We then looked at adverse effects, uh, QTC, um, time from ventricular depolarization to complete repolarization. Uh, prolongation of QT intervals is a common side effect of antipsychotics such as uh, haliperidol. Um, we also looked at uh, hyperprolactemia, which can be a side effect of antipsychotics which act on dopamine receptors. And also BMI uh, with weight gain seems uh, for quite a few drugs such as olanzapine, clozapine, and risperidone. So putting all of this data together, we can basically see that we have uh, an increased observation of adverse effects uh, in the group of patients who at some point have polypharmacy. Um, so for example, hyperprolactemia uh, was seen in 24.5% of the patients who had polypharmacy at some point against 4.8 uh, on, on the patient who only received monotherapy. Um, the same was true for uh, high doses as compared to low doses. There was a, a, a somewhat increase, but, but not as big as for the uh, polypharmacy. So this is ongoing work. And we're at the moment looking at basically uh, in, incorporating the exposure period. So, so that we basically look at how often do we see these mentions of the, these adverse side effects uh, right after a period of either polypharmacy or uh, high dosage. So in conclusion, we find that it's possible to employ a natural language processing to extract dose and duration of specific antipsychotics and periods of polypharmacy uh, from the electronic health records where this information is not available. So at this trust, there's no electronic prescribing. So we can only get the information on medication from the free text. Um, and antipsychotic polypharmacy and high dose antipsychotic treatments should be carefully managed with additional attention towards measures of physical health. So thanks very much for listening. This was work done at the UCL Division of Psychiatry funded by the MRC uh, Pathfinder grant and done in co collaboration with Justin, Nomi, Joe and David. And uh, if you're interested in the CNI-CRIS database, please uh, have a look at, at the link here.